Today's question comes from Brendan in Rhode Island. Brendan writes, I've worked hard for eight years after completing graduate school at age 23. I paid off 14 grand in student loans and a $13,000 car note. I'm 31 now and I make 100 grand a year as a CPA. I have 80 grand in cash, 140 in retirement savings. I bought a condo on which I owe 122 at 3.15%. I'm doing well, but I could be doing better. I have money hoarding issues which are debilitating even on smaller purchases. I worry about money more than I should for my level of success. My investments are 15% in bonds because I'm afraid of a dip and cannot bring myself to invest in excess cash. A six-month emergency fund for me would be 15 to 17 grand. How do I get myself out of this hoarding and fear in order to boost my financial success? I... Right off the top here, man, this question, I'm doing well, but I could be doing better. Often folks get tied up in this elusive place where they're going to quote unquote feel a certain way whenever they get to some sort of finish line. And most of us don't take the time to articulate to ourselves what that feeling is going to feel like. And so we make our first million. I haven't made one, but then you just, you're so obsessed with the next one because you never stop to think, you think this is going to heal you, right? And you don't ever get there. And so I'd love this to ask, to sit back and say, what are you chasing? What are you running from? What do you think you're going to be? What's it going to feel like when you get to wherever you think you're going? Because this person is just on a treadmill hitting up and up and up and up and up. And yet very intellectually self-aware. Brilliant. Self-aware. Yes. Because the language you're using says you know that, that you're but I can't that, get off this that trip, you're right? not that you're not in a good place. That's right, but I can't and it has get off nothing to do with the math. Nope. It has nothing to do with the money. It's a spiritual issue. That's right. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. I want you to kind of what I would tell you to do is to step back and say, let's start viewing money through a spiritual lens, through a a, a behavior lens that says all right, I've got to put it over there. It's a tool. I'm not freaked out about my car. My car is a tool that gets me to my job and gets me to the store. And I don't sit and worry about and obsess about my car. Money's a tool. It's taking me somewhere. It's a vehicle. It's taking me somewhere. And it's sitting over there instead of it's in my heart. Hoarding is a word you use if it's in your heart. And uh, It's the, compulsive. I can't the, stop. Yeah, the, 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 you, this is all... It's. Like it's got its claws in you. Yeah. And so the peace that passes understanding yes. is what we're looking for. I want you to reach a place where the money is sitting over here and you're looking at it in a pile, smiling at it and, and breathing in cool mountain air and that sense of exhale and just kind of, oh, okay, we're all right. And that's contentment. For me as a spender, Brendan, what I... I, I, I experienced that a couple different ways. One way I laugh about when I experience it is I used to think when you went into Costco or Sam's that it was federal law. You had to spend $200. That's why they check you going out with the <laughs> thing. They want to make sure you spent your $200, right? I, I just, I, it was a, a frenetic need to buy something thing. And it wasn't a sickness. I wasn't obsessive compulsive, but it was just a, it was a spiritual maturity thing. And it's like, well, if I get that, I'll be better. If I get that, I'll be better. If I get that, I'll be better. And, and what you were talking about a minute ago, John. And so uh, something happened. And uh, when I walk in there now, I don't. I can buy anything in there or everything in there. And I don't buy any of it and leave huh. quite often. Yeah. And so it's just that that's a. I put it over there. Your safety, your, your safety it's target like, has moved. Yeah, it's where, what I'm trying to. You're asking money to do something it can't do. Right. It can't give you peace. Right. It can't give you wholeness. It can't give you uh, no risk. Right. There's no such thing. And so when you do that, that helps. And then, you know, John always says when you're dealing with trauma that facts are your friends. And so let's let's look at what's real here. Yeah. Okay, and you say, okay, what's real is bonds are going to underperform in your portfolio, and you're actually going to make a mess instead of actually made good money on something that has a very long, stable track record. I mean, there are mutual funds that are 80 years old that have had eight down years in 80 years and 
72 up years. So to fret over that kind of track record is to fret over real estate going up. Or let's let's call that what it is. If uh, mutual funds go away, you'll be dealing with much bigger issues in your life. Yeah. <laughs> right? You'll you'll be borrowing water from your neighbor. So there'll be yeah. a bigger you'll thing need, going on. You'll need right? bullets and other That's stuff. Right. Yeah, and I mean, coffee. Like, That's yeah, right. You'll be trading blue jeans. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so you know, yes, you need to loosen up. I, I think you're trying to make the money do to – it's do a warm blanket. Do something spiritually for you that exactly. it doesn't have the capability to do. And you mentioned the word trauma often. It's been a while since I've been in the hoarding literature, but if I remember correctly, a lot of hoarding stems from loss or from trauma that hasn't been dealt with. And it's just your body's way of trying to grab control of something until suddenly that control takes a hold of you. Well, and the truth is, one thing money can do is it can give you a pad yeah. between life and and, yeah. you know, problems. I mean, you know, if, if the car blows up and you've got some money, it's a different than if the car blows up and you don't have money. So the truth is it does control, the, it helps you control the controllables. But what it cannot do is it cannot make you breathe that cool mountain air into your soul. And so this sentence, I'm doing well, but I could do better. I want you to spend some time. Where are you trying to go? Like, where is this, mm-hmm. this imaginary finish line? And what do you think it's going to feel like when you get there? Just spend some time with that. Breathe that air, and I love that, Dave. Larry Burkett used to say that the only difference between saving and hoarding is attitude. Huh. The same amount of money. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same action. Yeah. It's how, t- it's how tight you're holding, yeah, you're right? Not, it, it, it's attitude. It's how you feel mm. about the money and, and what you're asking the money to do for you. Is it going to save me, protect me, keep me warm and fuzzy at night? Hoarder. That's a hoarder. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's, I need, I, you know, so I can't get rid of this stack of magazines that I've had for 73 years. Yeah. You know, I'm a hoarder. And, and you know, your house looks like a, a, a dump because you can't, you can't get rid of this stuff because it's supposed to do something for you that it doesn't have the ability to do. So this weekend I had, I had a suit that my granddad gave me before he passed away and it fits me. Um, but it's a, it's an older cut. So it's not something you could wear. Um, it, I say it fits me. It doesn't fit me great, but it did. And I've kept it. I've never put it on in a decade other than just to, just to try it on once or twice. And this weekend I started to, I was cleaning out an old closet and I started to get rid of it. And I was like, no, this is my granddad's suit who passed away. And I finally said, my granddad is not in this ill fitted old suit. He's here. Yeah. Right. He's and it's time heart. for this yeah. to go because this was tr- I was trying to get this suit to do to be a memory. It's not it, its it job. Can't, it can't do stuff. It's to get me in out of a bank. If you give it that job, it's going to fail at it every time. It will and fail. the money's going to fail. That's right. At making you feel that cool mountain air That's into right. your soul. Financial peace is an attitude. It is not an it's amount. Spirit. Yeah. I love amount. That. That's the thing. That's a good question. Brent. Great question, man. Very good question.